Good morning, Tipler Nation. I have just arrived late last night in San Sebastian, Spain, or Donostia, as the locals call it. And you know when you are on vacation or you're working remotely like I am, or maybe you're even just in another city um, overnight for something, and Sometimes you wake up in the morning and because you went to bed at 3 a.m. like I did last night, you snooze your alarm 10 times and you just kind of don't want to get out of bed even though you feel guilty and you know you should get out exploring. And then there are other times where you wake up and your eyes just pop open and you have to get out the door as soon as you possibly can. That is how I felt this morning when I woke up. So despite being on about five hours of sleep right now, <laughs> um, I, you know, I have a little story about San Sebastian and I kind of wanted to share it with all of you. So about, gosh, back in 2001, so that's almost 20 years ago now, um, I studied abroad here in San Sebastian and I was 20 years old and I, you know, I was young, I was in college. I didn't know much about much, even though I thought I knew everything. And I was starting to really enjoy food so San Sebastian for me, living here for six months when I was 20, was my culinary awakening, was my realization, and especially as I think now that I founded the Crafty Cast, it was my realization that food is not just food, right? It's not just something delicious that you put in your mouth. Drinks are not just drinks. There is a story behind each and every one of them. And so some of the ways that I learned that while I was here, um, if you'll bear with me for a little while and stick around while I tell, tell my story, because, you know, side note, as I was driving into San Sebastian yesterday from Gihon, on the drive, I just kept finding myself getting emotional and tearing up a little bit. And if I didn't have my sunglasses on right now, you could see that I'm doing it a little bit now too. And I kept thinking like, gosh, why am I getting emotional? And it was because I felt like I was coming home to a place that has a really important significance to me. Um, I feel like I wouldn't be the same person I am today. Wow, sorry. Anyways, um, I feel like I wouldn't be the same person that I am today now if I hadn't studied abroad in San Sebastian. Um, and partially because I was a small town Massachusetts girl. Um, nothing wrong with that at all. I loved my upbringing, I love Massachusetts. Um, but I had no plans to leave Massachusetts ever. Um, and because why would I? My friends were there, my family was there, and then I had this opportunity to study abroad in San Sebastian, Spain um, when I was in college. And I took it. And it opened my eyes. And so this small town girl who never thought she was gonna leave, all of a sudden came home to Massachusetts after her six months here and was like, I'm moving to California. I have to go see the rest of our country. I've now seen more of Europe than I have of my own country. And it just changed my whole perspective on life and my whole perspective on how important experiences are and how important understanding different cultures are and really getting out there and living my life the way I wanted to live my life, which back to San Sebastian, while I was in San Sebastian made me realize a lot of how I wanted to live my life was through food and drink and not just stuffing my face and not just, you know, getting drunk, um, but more through understanding why this food is in this place and not where I'm from, understanding why they make this food that I do have in my place so differently here, um, understanding the stories behind the people who owned the, you know, pincho bars that I was eating at. It, why do they eat pinchos here? Why do they have bars full of delicious food that you just grab and eat as you're standing there and that's part of their culture and why the heck don't we have that in the United States? And then when it came to cider, you know, I got an opportunity to visit a Basque Cideria. And the Basque cider um, culture is incredible. And they have a really kind of deep tradition of shooting it from the barrel so it goes straight across. Um, you catch it in your cup. There's always the same meal that is served. Um, usually it's tortilla, bacalao, bread, um, marcona almonds, membrillo, manchigo cheese. And you just drink cider and eat this delicious food with strangers and with some friends and get to know people. And that was a new experience for me and totally made me crazy about Spanish cider as I think you all probably know now seeing my trip to Gijon and what you're gonna be seeing coming up here too. Then when it came to food, so interesting. So this was, like I said, back in 2000, almost 20 years ago. Um, 
So the Basque culture has a very deep culinary culture. More Michelin stars than kind of most cities. Um, I think Kyoto is one of the only ones, and I can't remember if that's for three star or one star, but whatever. Like, this is a small city, and their Michelin stars are out of control. Now, not that fancy food is the only thing that matters, because like I said, the pinchos are incredible too, and the casual eating is probably some of the best eating, casual or not, that I've ever had. So. When I got here, there was an opportunity that I heard about to join a gastronomic society. And gastronomic societies here are really like such old, old, deep tradition. These have been going on forever. And so I was enthralled with this idea. When I went to sign up, however, I found out that gastronomic societies in San Sebastian are male. The chefs are male, the cooks are male, right? Um, and so women weren't allowed to join. Um, and so again, this was 20 years ago. So I, who I am, went down to the school and threw a fit, um, threw a regular old American fit um, about not being able to join. And so we talked, we talked, we talked, eventually they found a way and they found a gastronomic society that would let me take this class and learn from these amazing male cooks about the local traditional foods of San Sebastian. And so we got to learn how to make all of these amazing traditional foods. Some of them very standard, like tortilla de española, um, and then others really like culturally significant. So things like um, scrambled eggs with sheep intestine and sheep blood, right? Um, conger eel, where they would bring the live conger eel in and kill it right there in front of us and teach us how to kill it and then really like teach us how to cook it. Um, Piperada, arroz con leche. Um, so all sorts of things that we got to learn over the course of weeks. Um, and that experience, just seeing how passionate these men were about what they were doing, about telling us the stories about where this dish came from, how their mother used to cook it, why it's in San Sebastian and it's not down the road, you know, in Asturias, right? Things like that. Um, the pride that they took in the stories behind these food and drink experiences just blew my mind. It was incredible. And it really opened my eyes to not just eating and drinking and it just being something that we all do three plus times a day, right? Um, but it being more of an experience and more of something to stop and ask some questions and think about where that food came from. Think about who's behind the food that made it. If I think back, I don't know that I ever would have got to the place where I am today where I founded The Crafty Cask, where my whole mission and my whole job now is to find the stories behind craft alcohol um, and find these amazing producers and tell their stories to the world so that other people can have this amazing eye-opening experience like I did, I don't know that I would have ever found my place there if I hadn't come and studied abroad in San Sebastian almost 20 years ago. I'm gonna be sharing a lot of my experience in San Sebastian with you just like I did when I was in Asturias. I hope you enjoyed all of that great cider and food and fun that I shared while I was in Asturias. But now that we're in Basque Country, I will start sharing this. Um, if you want to see what I'm eating, because like I said, San Sebastian is one of the food capitals of the world. I typically don't share a ton of my food here on the Crafty Cast, um, but if you pop over to my personal profile, which is savory underscore girl, pretty much all I post is food there, especially um, a little bit more of the kind of sightseeing and things like that as well. Um, so you can pop over there and follow me there as well if you'd like um, to see some of the food because boy, I am gonna be eating some food. You should see even just the pinchos that I had last night at like midnight when I got in. Um, I'll, I'll share a few photos on my other profile soon. Man, delicious. Um, and Chacoli is from here, so I'm gonna go to a Chacoli winery. Verdejo will probably go try to find some um, a winery that maybe makes that if I can. Um, Sidra. So we are going to be exploring Calimochos. Are you familiar with Calimochos? It's a Basque kind of specialty that I personally kind of love. Um, it's red wine and Coca-Cola mixed. Don't judge it until you try it. Um, so we're gonna be doing all sorts of fun exploring. And let me, while before I sign off, I know I've been talking for a little while here. This is longer than my normal kind of stint, but I'm excited. And when you're excited, at least when I'm excited, I don't shut up. So let me show you a little bit around and some of what I love. It is just incredibly beautiful here. It still feels like my culinary home and my culinary awakening. And when I say culinary, I mean alcohol as well, of course. Um, and so I can't wait to share San Sebastian with all of you.